This week's parsha has many highlights, Parshat Emor, and we will touch upon a few of them. The parsha begins with the purity status of the Kohanim, and also of eating what's called Truma. Truma is holy food, which only the Kohanim can partake of. And the parsha goes into, for example... If a Kohen became impure, in which case he cannot presently eat the Truma. So what he has to do is, after this impurity ceases, whatever it takes, if it's a day or seven days, whatever level of impurity, he has to afterwards go to the Mikveh, immerse himself in a body of water, and wait for nightfall. It's called Ha'arev Shemesh. Even though he's technically pure, he went to the mikveh and he's clean now in that sense, he has to wait until nightfall to be able to eat of the truma and to be pure. Now, there's many levels of Ha'arev Shemesh. Like we said, there's a guy who just has to keep maybe one day and at nightfall already he can eat of the truma. There's another person who has to wait seven days, another person has to wait 30 days. It depends, there's different levels. But for all of them, once the time comes for the purity, they have to wait until nightfall of that last day. This is also in life, that people work hard, work hard to try to come close to Hashem, go through innumerable ups and downs in life, and waiting for that time where I will be pure. By most people, it's after Ha'arev Shemesh, after nightfall. What does it mean after nightfall? There is the life collectively as a whole, where after nightfall is after a person passes away, then he reaps the reward of eating of the truma, of all the reward that waits for him for all of his good deeds. But you have levels. It doesn't have to just necessarily be after when the person passes away. But even in a person's lifetime, he has to, he has to go through a certain level, a certain time span of toiling and struggling, waiting to finally enter the realm of holiness until finally his time for Ha'arev Shemesh, his nightfall, arrives and he's able to partake, he's allowed to partake of the holiness, of the reward of his good deeds, to now see the fruits of his labor. But it's in many levels. And a person must remember that, to keep on going. You have no idea when your Ha'arev Shemesh when your sun arrives, the little translation of nightfall is Ha'arev Shemesh, the darkening of the sun, the sun setting. In other words, you've reached a point now that's afterwards and now I can enjoy. So this happens in many levels. There's people who struggle in their teenagehood years, their 20s, their 30s, and only in their 40s they finally begin to taste the reward of all their toils and struggles. Other people, it's already in their 20s, other people in their 80s, and there's different types of concepts and, and aspects in this at every level. But the point is, you have what's called a Ha'arev Shemesh. This is one point in the Parsha. Another amazing point of the, the Parsha, it goes into all the holidays, which is very fun, very exciting to go through all the Parshas. And it goes through also, for example, the laws of the Lulav and the Etrog, right? The four species taken on Sukkot. So it mentions, right, Ulkachtem Lachem, it says the Torah says you must take these four species. And now we know, we learn, how are they to be taken? So the Gemara outlines, the Talmud outlines how these four species are taken, that we bind the myrtle branches, the hadas, the willow branches, the arava, and the lulav, the palm branch, together. And then we join them by hand with the etrog. Now, people know already that the hadas is, corresponds to one category of a type of a person. Just like hadas smells nice, but has no taste. So you have certain Jews who they give off a nice spiritual smell, but there's no taste in their devotions. They're still lacking in something. They have a nice scent. They have a spiritual scent, but they're lacking the taste, right? And you have other people the opposite, that 
they have a taste, but there's no smell. Like the palm branch is taken from the tree that has fruit, dates. Dates have a taste, but there's no smell at all on the date, the palm branch tree. It just tastes. So you have also people who have good deeds in their taste. In other words, there's a taste, there's a flavor in their devotions, but there's no smell. Okay? It could be the smell is connected more to uh, to the actions, and taste is to da'at, because ta'am, ta'am is da'at. Yishlo ta'am. Ta'amo imo, they say in Hebrew. His ta'am means his his expression, his 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 opinion is with him. So ta'am, taste, is more the idea of learning the knowledge, and smell, giving off a good smell, is good deeds. Ma'asim tovim, they give off a good smell. Good actions, they give off a smell. So you have some people, they have more good actions than learning. Other people have more good deeds than learning. They're more learned, but less good deeds. And you have people who have nothing, like the willow branch. No taste, no smell, no Torah, no prayer, no good deeds, empty. But we believe, obviously, there's something good. These three types of people all need to connect to the etrog. The etrog is the idea of the tzaddik. The tzaddik is complete in that he both has a good smell and a good taste, meaning his actions, his deeds are complete, are beautiful, and also his wisdom is complete also. This is what makes him a tzaddik, a true tzaddik. And these three categories, the people who are more learned but less in devotions, the other ones are more into devotions and less learning, and those who have nothing, all three categories are bound together and need the tzaddik. In other words, in relationship to the tzaddik, the tzaddik's on one side and the rest of the Jewish people are on the other one. And what's needed is to bind them all. But again, even when binding, we're joining all the type of people in the Jewish people, in the Jewish nation, to the tzaddik. That's the idea of joining the three to number four, the etrog. And that we're joining all the Jews to the tzaddik. And remember, you see that everybody needs a tzaddik. From the mitzvah of the four species and how they're joined together, this concept of attaching oneself to a tzaddik comes out in the expression of this idea of joining the four species. Another beautiful idea that we find in the parsha is the mitzvah, which is right now what we're doing, the mitzvah of counting the omer, sfer to omer. And the Torah, this week's parsha, the wording is amazing. Usfartem lachem mimachorat hashabbat. Usfartem, you must count lachem for yourselves from the day after Shabbat, which is meant to be the first day of Pesach. After the first day of Pesach, we start counting the Omar. But the the pasuk is amazing that it says lachem to you. You're counting as if to say. Yourself. What's the idea of Sfer to Omer? These 49 days, really 50 days, are a miniature capsule of your entire life. These 50 days encapsulate the rest of the year and also the rest of your life. And you're counting the days which are your days. You're counting your life days. Every t- day of the counting of the Sfer to Omer, you're connecting to a piece of your puzzle. That's why these days are so precious, so important. And the, and the point coming out here is that your days are part of the picture. Every one of the days. Even the days that you felt, eh, I just blew my day, went down the drain, everything is eh. With those days, and especially the days where you feel you accomplished a lot and you got things done and you're advancing, etc. All the days are part of the picture. Every single day has meaning, is part of the picture, and there's no room to say, eh, my life is just down the drain, and there's nothing happening, I'm not advancing, I'm not moving. No. Every day has a good in it, whether hidden or revealed, but it's part of the picture. You don't know the whole picture of your life. You see from your constricted vision of what of your two eyeballs, <laughs> that's how you envision your life. Do you know the whole picture? the realm of the souls, the nefesh, ruach, neshama, the level of the angels, the celestial level, the heavenly court, the tribunal. Do you know the whole picture? You don't know. So you must believe 
that every day is part of the picture and it counts. This is why the Torah stresses, Usfartem Lachem. You are counting for your own good, for your own benefit, and you're also counting yourself.